Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again and this time I've got two Voltec PM100 single phase power analyzers. And what these units are used for is you attached your device under test, your AC powered device under test to the unit and you can monitor the likes of the voltage, current, watts, VA, VAR, power factor and on the display here you've got all sorts of character based data and you can set the unit up to, to measure peaks to integrate data for the likes of watt hours or VA hours etc. Now I actually have my own unit, I actually already have a PM100 I'll show you that right now up on the bench and there it is and as you can see it's powered up and at the moment it's just uh, showing 242.8 volts that's the uh, voltage being measured at the moment and you can see that I've got a small socket attached to it that I can just connect my device under test to. Now I do use this unit from time to time when I'm repairing test instruments if I want to do any kind of monitoring on that uh, single phase supply. Now as I said, these two units have come in marked down as faulty. This top one here is marked down as beyond economical repair. We'll take a look at that. The bottom was marked down as some of the buttons on the keypad are not working. So I think we'll take a look at this bottom one first. We'll open it up, we'll take a look and see if we can affect the repair. And here's the rear of the unit. You can see the AC power connector up here. That's just for powering the actual unit. It's got nothing to do with the device under test. And you've got an on off switch there. And this is where you will interface to. Basically, you've got a voltmeter here and an ammeter. So you supply your own external device under test AC supply, measure the voltage across your device under test here, and there's an internal shunt on this ammeter here. So basically put your mains AC line in through here and a way out to your device under test. This connection here is in the case of an external shunt and this is actually a voltage input. It's a millivolt per amp input and the default scaling is 100 millivolts per amp. But I believe that's adjustable. I don't actually use this blue input here. So let's tear down the unit and let's have a look inside. And here we are inside the unit and as you can see there's one main PCB but there's this little top panel here which actually flips up. So let me just get that removed. So here we are inside the unit. Like I said, one large PCB, but it is split into different sections as we'll see. Over in this corner here, we've got the main transformer, the IEC filter up here, and the bulk capacitors there. And I think we've probably got a regulator, I don't know if you can see that, down in the corner there. And next to it, the main processor section. Look at the microprocessor here, an EEPROM, RAM, and the support and logic crystal, etc. for that. And the drive electronics up onto this ribbon here, going to the front panel, also for reading the keypad. Now over in the bottom section here, you can see it's well isolated. We've got the, here, we've got the main shunt that I mentioned earlier and the connections from those rear banana sockets down onto that main board. And here we've got the electronics related to interfacing to the device under test. We've got a couple of 8-bit A to D converters. And over at the right hand side here, looks like we've got some sort of isolation Looks like we've got a couple of isolation transformers here and also here these look suspiciously like opto isolators for interfacing the logic back and forward to the main board. And of course over the right hand side here we've got the main LCD and it's ribbon cable down onto the main board which will obviously connect to the microprocessor. At the top here, this is where the optional card will fit, the GPIB or RS232 printer card and there looks like there's a edge connector on the front panel there uh, in line with that card slot there. And this edge connector here I think's probably got something to do with the option of the PM300. There is actually a three phase version of this unit so I suspect it shares the same main board but there's a riser interface here so that it can support a couple of extra boards in the unit for that three phase operation. 
And in fact, looking at the back panel there on the inside, there's the optional holes for those extra circuit boards in relation to the three-phase unit, the PM300. So this is a unit with the faulty keypad. So I feel safe to power it up, but I will go over the unit just to make sure I've got no leaky capacitors or anything else that looks out of place or blown. And if it looks good, I think we'll put power into this one and see what happens. So I've had a look over the circuit board and it all looks good. There's no sign of any corrosion or anything like that. No leaky caps. And as noted earlier, this is actually the 5 volt regulator. I, I suspect that's the main 5 volt regulator for the entire uh, processor logic, etc. And it all looks good. So I think we're safe to put power in. Okay, we're ready for power up. Let me just switch on power at the back of the workshop here. And power up the unit. And yes, it is actually powering up. But this repairs all about the push button, so let's just see if any of them are working. So when you press any of these buttons here, you're actually affecting this bottom line here. So we've got volts displayed there. Yep, amps, watts, VA, VAR, power factor. That's all correct. And this bottom set here, oh, let's just select volts again. That peak button's not working. It should be changing this bottom line here for volts peak. And if I go into amps, it should now change to amps peak. That button's not doing anything. The harmonics, nothing. THD, nothing. Oh, frequency button's working. Yeah. And these other two are not working either. Yep, and in fact, when I press this button here, I should be getting one of these LEDs coming on here. So yeah, it does look like there's a problem with these buttons here. So let's tear down the front panel and let's take a look inside. Well, to get inside the unit, it doesn't look like this front panel actually comes off as such because it's just the metal along the base bent up at right angles. So it looks like I have to take out these screws here in order to lift this out. I hope I don't need to re remove the main board. But first things first, I'll just pull these connectors here. Wow, they're tight. I might need a screwdriver to help me there. Ah, but wait a minute. I just pulled this end here and this end just came away on its own. I wonder if that wasn't plugged in. And in fact, looking at this other one, it looks like it's not plugged all the way in. Is that the problem? Well, let's put it back together again and let's take a look. Well, let me just push this one back in. Yes, I can see what the problem is. Let me demonstrate that. If this is the circuit board, the main circuit board on the unit here, this connector here is meant to go down past the PCB into its socket. What's well, very, very close is actually sitting here on the PCB at one end. It won't let me push it all the way down. So let me just see if I can just bend it out and down. That's that one plugged in correctly now. Let's try again with this one here. First of all, plug the one in at the back. That's that one correctly plugged in. And this one here, the top side. There it goes. 
And let's power it up again and let's just see if that was the problem. Right, let's try for a power up again. Look, it defaults to watts on that bottom line there. Yep, yeah, that's working. Let's try peak. Yes, that's working. That's working. Frequency, fundamental, an integrator. <laughs> it's working. It's all it was. A loose connector. Wow. And that LED's working at that far side as well. And the main menu. Yep, that's all working as well. Wow. Well, that was an easy fix. Now, the display does actually have a backlight, and I know it doesn't look that great on camera, and it's not so bad in real life, but uh, yes, it is a little bit dim. But they're all like that. My own unit's the same. Okay. Right, we're ready for a power up again. I do actually have a device under test connected. It's a small heat gun. So I should be able to see some current, etc. on the unit. So let me just power up. I've already got the device under test AC supply connected. So let's just power it up. And yes, we're seeing 245.9 volts there. That's the voltage across the device under test. So that's working. And you can see you've got zero amps at the moment. So let me just uh, turn on the heat gun off camera. And there we go, 1.2 amps there, uh, 168 watts. Let's have a look at the power factor. Yeah, 0.569 for a heat gun. And let's just check some of these buttons down here. Yep, that's all seems to be working. We've got some data there for the harmonics. A bit of THD, 1.5, 1 1.6% 1 there. Well, that is, looks like it's working. And if I cre press the integrator button, we should get it counting up there. Yes, off it goes. And it's counting up. So it looks like it's working. This one's fine. So off onto the second unit. Let's have a look at that one. Okay, and here's the second unit. It's actually marked in the top BER, Beyond Economical Repair. But uh, let's take the cover off and let's take a look inside. Well, I have gone over the unit and I can't see much wrong with it at all. Certainly the ribbon cables are connected properly this time. Everything looks fine, all the capacitors look fine and everything else over at the device under test interface looks fine also. But there is one problem. Let me zoom in and see if you can spot it. Check that I see there. It's definitely a factory problem. Um, it's not been soldered down properly. When it's been inserted into the board, it's not been fully seated before it was actually soldered. Now the joints all look good. All the pins do look like they are soldered down to the board. But the ones at this corner here, you're at the limit for the length of that pin. And although it does look like it's soldered, I'm not happy with it. So I'm going to have to remove this main board and desolder that IC and reseat it. It's just a 748C4520, it's a binary counter, so it's obviously part of the logic here. So let's uh, get the board removed and let's see if we can fix that IC. Well there's the back of the board, it's all looking pretty clean and over here you can see that IC with the pins that are partially coming through at this end and no appearance of them at this end. Through whole plated board of course, so like I said I don't think it'll cause too much of a problem unless there's any heat cycles that might cause an issue, but we'll fix it anyway. So let me go away and do that and I'll come back. Well, there's the IC removed from the board and the one thing I wasn't going to do was just heat up the pads of the legs of the ICs and press it down because if you don't get it right, there's a chance you could rip the through hole plating and push it through the hole and when you re-solder the pin at the other side, you won't know and if there's any soldered top side pads where there's a track coming off 
you may not get a connection and indeed there is one I think pin one's got a wire and pin seven there as well yeah in fact there's a few of them so the best way is remove the chip from the board and then inspect the legs of the chip make sure there's no remains of the through hole plating on the leg and if it is you know it's in the PCB so now it's just a case of reinserting the chip fully into the PCB and I can solder it up so I'll go way off and do that now so there we go, that's the PCB back in. I've not fitted the rear connectors just yet. Um, I've just put the PCB in and bolted up enough and connected enough cables so that we can put power into it and see if this unit's actually working. So let me set that up now. Okay, here we go. Got the mains lead connected. Let me just put on the switch at the back of the unit. And yes, we've got something on the display. Let's check the keypad. Yes, that appears to be working. Yep, yeah, no problem. Okay, so let me go and uh, switch the power off and refit the back panel connectors. And then we'll check it with a device under test. Okay, and here we go. I've got the device under test supply and my uh, small heat gun hooked up again. So let me just put on power. 244.0 volts today so let me just switch on the heat gun <laughs> and yes 1.2 amps there about 166 watts perfect power factor 0.570 how about some peak yes integrator yes that's working I think this unit's working perfect so let me box this one back up and I'll come back. Well, there we go. Two Voltec PM100 units up and running. Seem to be okay. I'll uh, put them under test for a little while longer and make sure they're stable and uh, they're working properly. But the big question is, especially with the first unit with those two ribbon cables that were loose in their sockets there, was that really a fault? Did they jump out on their own? Uh, the jury's out in that one. Because sometimes when companies want to uh, upgrade their test equipment in their workshop, they might sabotage their equipment so that they can get it through management to go and buy some new ones. Well, who knows? The second unit with that uh, IC that wasn't fully soldered in, was that the problem? Possibly, although the solder joints did look okay, albeit they were on the limit there. So maybe that was the fault with that one. Who knows? But anyways, looks like they're up and running now and they can go forward and be used again. So thanks for watching and remember you can comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And if you want to help more directly then you can always donate via PayPal or Patreon in the links below. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel. Check them out and thanks for watching.